Welcome back. I'm Troy Singleton here in the automotive department at Sinclair College. If you've watched our last couple videos, one of those videos was going over the Ohm's Law, all of the laws that relate to series and parallel. So if you have the laws down, the next step is to figure out, hey, which method am I going to use? So first, let's do series. So let me draw just a basic series circuit. So we'll throw our battery in there. We'll say that it's 12 volts, ground it. We'll go through a fuse switch and I don't know, maybe a light bulb or something. We'll throw a light bulb in there. Switch is closed. Now we know there's 12 volts in this case. If I was to measure the amperage with an ammeter, okay, one of the laws for series says no matter where I measure the amperage, it's always going to be the same. So let's say that I come up with two amps. Okay. Now if I plug this into Ohm's law, Ohm's law is E over I times R. So the voltage is divided by the amperage times the resistance. So if we plug these numbers into this solving circle, we are going to find the missing one. So if I have 12 volts and I know there's two amps in the circuit, then that gives me a total of six ohms. All right. So pretty easy for series. Again, let's uh, change this up slightly. Let's get rid of our light bulb and let's throw a couple of resistors in there. Okay. Now let's do something a little bit different. Let's say this is a, a two ohm and this one is a two ohm. Well, both of these resistors are in series. Well, since they're in series, the battery has no idea that these two are in series. So we're looking at the total circuit and if you remember from our last video, it says one of, or the resistance law for series says, just add them up. That's how you get the total. So a two ohm plus a two ohm is going to be four ohms. Now, if I plug these numbers into Ohm's law, I have 12 volts and I have four ohms. That means three amps is gonna flow through the circuit. So that's series. So that one's pretty easy. Now, parallel. Parallels where it gets a little more complicated. Again, pay attention to the laws that we did in our last video. Once you have the laws down, that's the best advice I can give you in terms of, hey, which method am I going to use? So let's do method number one. And I want to know, hey, what is the total amperage in the circuit? So before you get scared, look at what you do know. Well, remember the law for parallel says each branch or leg gets the source voltage. Well, if I have 12 volts, that means 12 volts here, 12 volts here, 12 volts here. Then I can treat these like individual series circuits. What's three divided into 12? That's gonna give me four amps. Four into 12 is three amps for this leg. Six into 12 is gonna give me two amps for this leg. And the law that relates to amperage in parallel circuits says, how do you get the total amperage? You just add them up. So four plus three plus two, we have nine amps total in this circuit. Okay, so again, that's probably my favorite one, just because we can treat these as individual series circuits and add it up. All right, method number two. Thinking about this method, this could be simple or this could be difficult. All right, so as far as this, the emoji, method number two, little bit of a frowny face. Just because if I give you terrible numbers, then there's an equation. So let me give you some terrible numbers first. Three ohms and four ohms. Well, there's an equation, okay? And that is resistance total is equal to R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So if I take and call this resistor one, this resistor two, I plug this into this equation and I get three times four over three plus four. Okay, so that's like 12 divided by seven, which is like 1.7 ohms for our total. Okay, so again, a little bit of math involved, a little bit of an equation. So that's the frowny face part. However, what's popular in the automotive world is what if both of these resistors are the same? Then if we plug those numbers into this equation, I get a little bit different results. What's four times four over four plus four? Well, four times four is 16 divided by four plus four is eight, and I end up with two. Wait a second, okay? So if the numbers are even, I plug them into this equation, I get half of one of those numbers. So 
Let's do it again. Let's say that these numbers aren't four. Let's say they're 100. What's 100 times 100 over 100 plus 100? I don't know. I just know when I do the math, I'm going to come out with 50. So see the pattern? So that's why this method could be awesome because when we talk about series parallel, my best advice for series parallel is to simplify. So basically what I did in th doing this equation, I just simplified these two four ohm resistors into one two ohm resistance. Because remember, the battery, it is stupid. It has no idea that there are multiple resistors or resistances in the circuit. It just sees one big resistance based on the voltage of the battery. That's how many amps are gonna flow through the circuit. So in this case, we just simplified these two fours into one two ohm resistance. Now again, that's gonna be my best advice for series parallel. Simplify, simplify, simplify. All right, method number three, hands down a frowny face just because another equation involved and lots of steps. Okay, so let's go back to this. So in this case, I want to find resistance total. All right, so this is a three ohm, this is a four ohm, and this is a six ohm. Well, there's an equation. One over RT is equal to one over R1, plus one over R2, plus one over R3, plus however many legs or branches that you have. So all you have to do is plug these numbers into this equation. Sounds easy, right? Well, one over RT is equal to one over three plus one over four plus one over six, okay? The problem is, if you remember from your math class, you cannot just add these fractions together without finding a common denominator. Of course, you can change them to decimals, use a graphing calculator, whatever, but to use our method, one over RT, the least common denominator in this case is going to be 12. We're going to make each one of these something over 12. Well, what times 3 gets me 12? That's 4. What times 4 gets me 12 is 3. What times 6 gives me 12? That's 2. Then I add these up. I get 9 over 12, but I'm not done. 9 over 12 is 1 over RT. So I have to flip both sides. RT over 1 is going to be equal to 12 divided by 9, which is 1.3 through repeating ohms. Now, if we go back to our resistance law for parallel, it says that the total resistance is less than the smallest leg, okay? As far as the frowny face part, the reason I don't like this, lots of steps. And it's real easy if you're like me, I do stupid math, I try to go too fast, end up giving you know, the wrong answer, or the wrong number in somewhere in the equation, and my answer doesn't come out right. So if you're gonna use this method, which again works a lot of times, just make sure you do all the steps correctly and you do all your math correctly. All right, that's method number three. Now, we're getting into a little bit more of a uh, happy face here. Method number four. Method number four is very similar to method number three in that it's the calculator method. So it's kind of the shortcut a little bit of method number three. So if you hit memory clear on your calculator, and then you do one divided by R1, memory plus, one divided by R2, memory plus, one divided by R3, memory plus, one divided by memory recall equals, if you plug these numbers on the calculator in this order, hitting these buttons, it will spit out 1.33 repeating. Okay. So definitely a method that's worth trying. However, kind of the drawback, there's a lot of buttons to push here. Okay, so again, you mess up one of those buttons, you're not gonna get the correct answer at the end. All right, so that's method number four, which kind of piggybacks off at method number three. Now, method number five, the last one. Another favorite method, okay, but this only works when I have the same resistance values, which could be common. Again, not that it's necessarily a resistor, uh, it could be light bulb. So if I think about my lights down the side of a trailer or lights across the top of a cab of a truck, those are the same lights, maybe different color, but they're the same lights nonetheless. So if all of these are same, let's add, let's might as well add in another one here. Let's say that all of these resistors or light bulbs or whatever they are, they all have 12 ohms a piece. So in order to figure out the total resistance, you just take the resistance value divided by how many there are. 
So our resistance value, so that's resistance total. So our resistance value is 12 ohms. Well, how many of them are there? One, two, three, four. Then I'm gonna divide by four and I get three ohms as the total. So kind of a shortcut method to number three and number four, but again, it only works when all of the values are the same, okay? All right, be sure to check out our other videos, uh, especially the video on series and parallel and the laws that relate to that before you go over the methods. All right, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.